Okay, so in this new lecture, we're going to be working on this garage texture that we're having over here in our reference. Actually, what is important is not the texture in itself, but the workflow. How can we create this kind of texture procedurally? So it's going to be very simple and it's going to be exciting because we're going to be using the, the waves. We're going to be uh, making some mixes with these waves so that we can achieve this one. So as I said, what is important is not the, the texture in itself because you can use a variety of textures, but what is important is the, the workflow. So I'm going to drag my reference. I've got a real reference over here so that we can follow it. I prefer this approach to keep an eye on real references. Oops, we're having a problem over there. Yeah, this one is a GPG. There we go. So this is our reference. So I'm going to be dragging it over here. So we make a, we made a cut over here. I'm going to be switching it to the UV editor. And let's bring our reference just like this. So basically this is our aim on close inspection. So you can see over here that we have these kind of insets. We have these tiny insets, these big insets over here. And we have some noise, some of the noisy details on the surface of our garage. Okay, so let's get down to it. So I'm going to select everything, hit X, delete everything, hit Shift A, mesh plane, just like this. Let's zoom on it. Over here, I'm going to extend this bottom part and I'm going to be switching it to the shader editor just like this and over here we need to create our garage material so create new let's call it garage just like this okay so we have it on the bottom over here so I'd like to start first by creating some wave wave texture so shift a search for wave wave texture let's put it over there and let's connect it to the base color so in order to see it over here, I'm going to hit Z and switch to the material preview. There we go. So basically this is the starting point, but as you can see, we need to spin it by 45 degrees so that we can make it uh, aligned with our grid. So let's do that. So we can hold uh, control T, select this one, hit control T, and we will have this uh, texture coordinate and mapping. But in order to get this one, I want you to make sure that you are enabling an add-on, a shortcut add-on called the node wrangler this one over here make sure that it's activated so that you can ha have access to these quick uh, shortcuts like control G control shift click so that you can uh, display anything of these okay so from here you can see that we have the rotation so let's play with this rotation so we can do it from the x-axis yeah it's not doesn't make any difference so you can set over here to 45 45 degree nice over here for the scale I'd like to increase it I'm gonna increase this scale to 10 all right, so now we have the, this is the first detail. So you can see over here on these edges, we're having some sharp uh, ends. So we need to do that. So shift A, search for curl ramp. Curl ramp like this. I'm going to be putting it on top of that. And let's make these close to each another. And yeah, let's see. There we go. So now we're going to be having some nice details when using this one as our normal map. Also, let's proceed and use it as our normal map. I'm going to hit hold G, move it to the side like this. Shift A, search for bumps, bump like this. Let's connect the color to the height and the normal to the normal. Now let's see. So now you can see that we have, we're having that illusion of height on our material. Good. So this is the starting point. So the next step that we need to do is to add these small insets. So for that, I'm going to be using again these, all of these. So Shift D, or there is no need to have the color, the color ramp. I'm going to just duplicate these waves. So Shift D and let's move them down over here and uh, instead of using this 10, I'm going to be using 50 so that we can have a lot of insets. Let me show you that. So I'm going to hit control, shift and click, left click so that we can display this one. So this is what we are able to see. I think we need to increase it even more. So let's set it to 75. All right, cool. So now let's, uh, what I'd like to do is to mix these two. So I'd like to mix this, uh, the first ones, control shift these. I'd like to mix them with these, but with, with one condition. I don't want to display these small insets on this uh, big surface. I just want to display it on this uh, this space over here. I just want to add another inset over here. For that, we're, gonna, we're going to be using a mask. But let me first uh, try to mix those. I think I'm going to be ignoring our bumps just for a second. Or let's move it down. Control shift go back to our principal BSDF. Shift A, search for mix RGB. So mix RGB. I'm going to be putting it on top of that. And I'm going to be connecting the second wave to the bottom like this. Now let's see. So now as you can see, we're mixing everything. So let's, let's see on that location. I think we need to decrease this one to just 50. Yeah, 50 is good. 
All right. So now what we need to do is to tell Blender to display this uh, this second wave only on this space over here. We don't want it to be displayed on everything. So for that, as I said, we're going to be using the mask. So the mask that we're going to be using is this one. So Control Shift and click this mask over here. So by simply taking this one over here and connecting it to the factor, we're going to be using it as a mask. And so let me explain what we're what we're doing. So basically, when we use this one as a mask, we're telling Blender to display the first color on the black surface and the color number two is going to be displayed on the white surface so let's go back to our principal bsdf control shift and click over here so that you can see that so as you can see we're having the opposite so if we switch this one like this we're going to be having that so now you can see that these small insets are displayed over here which is really good also yeah let's find a way to make it even more strong yep but let's keep tweaking it something like this but uh, let's make it even stronger yeah we can let's move everything to the side the whole G and move to the side over here and over here let's uh, add a color ramp color ramp like this and let's find out what we can do so let's move this one there we go something like this for this one let's make it little bit gray but actually we're affecting the color I don't want to be working on the base color just now I just want to work on the, uh, the bumps let's connect this one to the height and let's see what we got nice it's looking really good okay so now let's work on uh, the other details so you can see that we have some uh, details over here some noisy details so for that I'm gonna be using uh, two things first I'm gonna be using the, the Voronoi texture Voronoi texture this one over here and I would like to connect it using a uh, noise. So shift A, search for noise. And let's connect. Yeah, let's go ahead with the color. So basically we're, the, we're making a distortion of the Voronoi texture based on this noise. So control shift and click over here so that you can display what we got. So you can see that over here. I'm going to be decreasing this one to 1.5. And for the noise, let's increase it up. Something like 25. Nice, 25, it looks good. So we can do this, uh, shift A, search for color ramp again, and let's uh, tighten, or let's make these colors even more visible, like this. Stick to the side, make this one gray. Nice. All right, so now our next step is gonna be to mix uh, these uh, everything. So let's move these to the side over here. Shift A, search for again for a mix RGB. Put it over there. Go back to our principal BSDF. Control Shift and click over here. And let's connect the color to the first one and this one to the second. And let's take this one and connect it to the base color. And let's see what we got. Okay, there we go. So we have uh, we mixed those two uh, textures. Let's play with this one even more. Also, we can do this. We can switch this one to the multiplier. Let's see if you can uh, enforce so that we can strengthen both uh, values, both maps. Stick this one to one. Yeah, I think something like this would be perfect. Good. Okay, so now the next thing is to use this one as our bumps. So I want to display some bumps, some noisy details on the surface. But I think we need to scale it up. Yeah, so that we can match this one. You can see that these details are very tiny. So we can always go back over here and increase this scale. So let's, for example, set it to 50. Let's see. There we go. Nice. For the details, not much. All right. Let's try uh, straight without using this Voronoi, without using the noise. And let's see what we got. Increase that scale. Yeah, I think we need to increase this scale instead of having it as at one. Let's see. Yeah, something like five. Yeah, five is good, I think. Yeah looks good but there is no need to make these uh let's just bring them back so for the colors i think i'm going to be changing some of these colors yeah for the colors over here let's add another one over here and let's make it give it a different color from here some gray color instead or let's make it a little bit warm 
So just keep playing with these until you get something interesting. Okay, so now I would like to work on the roughness. So as you can see, our garage over here is metallic. So we need to increase this uh, metallic value to something like 0.75. Yeah, for our roughness, I would like to, let's for example, use this, uh, this one. It's connected to the roughness and let's see what kind of reflection we're going to be having. Nice. Yeah, I like this reflection, but let's tweak it a little bit. So color ramp, let's put it on top of that. And I don't want to make, I don't want to make this kind of variation. So let's, uh, for example, take this one and let's make it a little bit gray. And this one, let's make it, yeah, something like this. Nice. So I'd like to mention something. So this color over here of the these small insets, you can see that we have some dark color. So the reason why we're having this problem is because of our bumps. So our bumps are a little bit too strong. So we need to reduce it down to something like point, point 0.75 or even lower, something like point 0.5. Let's see. So now you can see that we start having some bright colors on that location. Okay, so that's it for our uh, garage texture. So this is how you can create it. So I'm gonna be using it in our scene. Okay.